Have you ever heard of Puyo Puyo? Well, if you don't know, basically, it's a puzzle game similar to Tetris, where you match four of the same color blobs, or Puyos as they are called, together. I can go on and on about the games and other stuff like that, but I want to talk about one game in particular. Puyo Puyo Sun, where Satan, aka Dark Prince, grows the sun so he can get a suntan. Arl, the main character of the series, doesn't like how hot it is outside, so she decides to stop Satan. There's other characters like Draco, a human-dragon hybrid, and Shazo, a swordsman who says a lot of subjective stuff. Now that I have that out of the way on to how I found this copy copy of this game. I usually stroll through Twitter and look at Puyo Puyo or other stuff like gameplay footage. One day I came across someone who had a physical copy of Puyo Puyo Sun for Sega Saturn. The post only had one reply from a username Kane J two hundred thousand who was hating on them for having a quote unquote rare game. I wanted to reply to him saying the game was not rare because you could emulate the game with the Sega Saturn emulator, but for some reason I felt like I needed proof. So I went out and looked for a Sega Saturn emulator. Once I found an emulator, I went to find a ROM for the game. Once I found one on an odd website, I downloaded it. The website was empty apart from the box art of the game and some Japanese text translated to download now. Nothing too odd, I mean, at least it wasn't a virus. I clicked the file and it took me to the title screen. One thing to note about this game is that usually there is an intro to the game basically showing the plot of the game, but that didn't happen. I shrugged it off as it was an old game and I probably skipped the intro. I started the game and it took me to the character select screen with the three main characters, Draco, Arl, and Shazo. I wanted to pick Draco because I wasn't too good at the game. Once I picked her, it took me to Draco in a grass field. I thought it was a cutscene at first, but when I pressed the arrow keys, I started walking. This should have been the first time that something was off, but I kept walking until I came across Witch. Yes, that is her name. As I walked up to her, dialogue started. Draco. Hey, Witch. Witch. Hey, Draco. Everything was translated to my surprise. Witch. Can you help me with something? Draco. Sure, what is it? Witch. Your tail. Draco. What? No, I'm not giving my tail to you. Which? Fine, if you put it that way. The Puyo battle started after this strange cutscene. However, one thing odd was that one row of garbage Puyos were present even though my opponent did nothing yet. I tried my best to beat her, but I ended up losing. Instead of getting a try again screen or game over, I got another cutscene. Draco was laying down defeated as the witch was standing over her, until she grabs Draco's tail and pulled it off like a piece of tape. Blood was visible. Draco. Ouch! What the hell? Witch. Don't worry, Draco. It will all be over soon. The screen then went to black as bone-breaking sounds were heard. Then it took me to the character select screen, however it was missing Draco. This was kind of surprising to see blood in Puyo Puyo Sun. I mean, seeing blood in the Puyo Puyo franchise was not that surprising as Shazza was decapitated in Mado Monogatari too. So nothing that scary but the fact that witch would kill her best friend was odd. I selected Arl because her difficulty was not as hard as Shazo's story. The game started and Arl was in a grass field with flowers. I walked through the repeating background until I came across Witch again. Arl, hey Witch, what are you up to? Witch, nothing that involves you. Arl, why are you being a jerk? All I said was hello. 
Which, I'm sorry, but this will be the last time you'll see me. Arl, what are you talking about? Which, let's just have a Puyo battle. The battle started, and again, I had garbage Puyos on my side, but instead of one row, it was three rows. This was too much for me, so I ended up failing the level. Once again, I got another cutscene. This time, Arl was lying down with Witch behind her. Witch then pulled one of Arl's arms off, similar to how she pulled Draco's tail off. Arl, my arm! What did you? Witch. Shh. Soon you'll be with the others. After that strange and oddly creepy cutscene, it took me to the character select screen, and something was different. When I hovered over Shazza's icon, he looked sad. It was the same animation used when you picked a different character, which I always found funny. But this was no laughing matter. The music was also absent, so it was dead silence. I selected Shazza, hoping he could do something. Something that could stop which. The game started and Shazza was taken to some kind of type of forest. I pressed right and started walking, hoping to not come across Witch. However, I came across a different character. Kikimura, who was just mopping. As I walked up to her, it took me to a Puyo battle. The battle was very short because as soon as the battle started, garbage Puyos rained on her side, making her lose. Once the battle was over, Kikimura disappeared, only leaving her mop behind. This will happen to a few other characters, Incubus, Harpy, Rulu, and even Satan himself. This was kind of getting ridiculous, but at the same time, strange. Were these witches victims? Did she kill them? I kept on walking until I was in a grass field for what seemed like two minutes. I walked through the field until I went to a tree. The tree looked like the sound test screen tree. Or the other tree where you meet, which turns out it was the latter. Which was sleeping until Shazza walked up to her. Which, Shazza, you are the last one on my list. You are always my favorite, so this will be special. Shazza, why? You didn't have to do this. Which. I'm sorry, it had to be done. The game then took me to the last battle with Witch. Once again, I had garbage Puyos on my side. However, it took half of my side, making it impossible to beat at this point. I didn't care, so I failed the level, which was right behind Shazzo, possibly getting ready to decapitate him again. And so she did... As soon as she did it, the t screen went to black for a few mi seconds. Then the screen went black on showing the many bodies of witches' victims. One of them stood out to me. It looked like a mermaid's tail. I knew who it belonged to, but then witch walked across the screen. She stared directly at me for a few seconds, then sat down. Finally, I have all my friends with me now. I can finally have them with me forever. Forever and always. The game soon closed on itself, leaving me dumbfounded. Is this the reason why Witch killed all of her friends? Hell, some of them Witch didn't even meet yet, so why would she kill call them her friends? Needless to say, I was not touching that ROM ever again. As for me, I still play some of the Puyo games to this day and look at some of the art. However, I can never look at Witch the same way again. Update. I went back and found the website the ROM was on. After that, I asked a friend of mine to play the ROM. They were able to be all the stages, however, when he did, Witch would only say this. Sorry, but winning won't save you. Wow. 
What a story. Now, unlike my, unlike the dark square creepypasta I read last time, this one was cliched to hell and back. But not in a good way. Like, it was all bad cliches. Because you had a lot of misspellings, a lot of, like, different versions of words, like, there. Like, when I read the word there, it was T-H-E-I-R, not... Yeah, you could probably get guess what I what it was meant. But, on top of the... Improp use of the wrong versions of, like, theirs and stuff like that. There were a lot of other spelling mistakes, as well as, like, lack of punctuation in a lot of parts. So, yeah, that's kind of a point against this creepypasta. Another thing that got wrong with it, that was wrong with it, there was, it was a huge Sonic.exe ripoff, because, I mean, while it did something different, where, as in, it wasn't like a game on CD that was like, Delivered to a friend with a letter attached to it, like in Sonic.exe. It didn't have that. But... When it, when it came to Witch being the killer and killing literally all the characters off one by one. Including Satan himself, mind you. Like... It just felt like Sonic.exe where... You know, Sonic Dixie started killing, li killed Tails, Knuckles, and Robotnik, even though, you know, Robotnik really isn't a friend, but you can still get my point. It felt too much like Sonic Dixie. The third issue I had with this creepypasta was the fourth wall break where, you know, Witch looked at, you know, the player, like, the main character of the story, playing the game, started talking to him after, you know, looking at the screen, and then doing the same to the main character's friend. Even though they won, like, it's, like, there are, there are times where the fourth wall breaks could actually be really good. But again, this is another time where it felt a lot like Sonic.exe, well, more like Sally.exe, honestly, but... Yeah, that's number three. And... Just... The unnecessary... Why would you, like, mention Twitter of all things? Seriously, why would you mention Twitter of all things? Like, that's... Another issue with the story. Like, wh why Twitter? Like, mentioning anything internet-wise is immediate, is almost always immediately something you should never do. Again, unlike the Dark Square Creepypasta I read last time, where that was, where it was done actually really well, 
Here's just the thing. Guy was getting hate for having a game that, again, is not even rare. Like, you could get the... Even, you could get even the Saturn ver Sega Saturn version of the game for like 15, 20 bucks. So, it's not a rare game at all. Like, yeah, it'd be rare if you got like the actual arcade cabinet for it, but otherwise, it's not a rare game. Which is another point against the creepypasta. But there's one thing I will 100% give this creepypasta props for, and that's mentioning the source material. Now, for those who didn't don't know, the Puyo games were originally a spin-off of the Madou Monogatari series, a series of dungeon crawler RPGs. Originally from the compile era from in back in the 90s The franchise started the Madou Monogatari series started on the Sega not that's a Sega Genesis There was a Sega Genesis port, but it started on the MSX 2 A Sega Genesis port of the first Madou Monogatari was created, which you can actually find an English patch for, by the way, so, yeah, there's that, yeah, it did stay true to source material and mention it, which, yeah, again, Puyo, the Puyo games or more specifically, the Madou Monogatari games were originally not for kids. Unlike the Sonic Team era games from the 2000s up to present day. Those are for kids, but the Compile era games, not for kids. Because, again... But it was... The games were originally a Metal Monogatari spin-off, which eventually became its own series. And the Metal Monogatari games are not for kids, because in the first game, like, Arl has a literal hallucination where she escapes the, play the tower where the game takes place. He, and all of her, like, friends and classmates, all their skin, flesh, and all that stuff melts off of their bodies. And again, this is, this was, while this was a hallucination, you have to remember, Arl was five years old in the events of the first Bado Monogatari, so the fact that a five-year-old was having night visions of her little friends and classmates have their skin melting and flesh melting off their bodies. Like, that's... That's proof enough that those games were not for kids. And again, Madou Monogatari 2, where it mentions Shazo being decapitated. That is also a thing that does happen, and you do end up fighting just Shazo's decapitated head, like, not long after... You decapitate Shazo, so... Yeah, that's the, that's the one thing I have to give this creepypasta props for. Which, you know, you really don't see too often, but again... The negatives outweigh the positives for this story, unfortunately, but again... While that was a good thing, there's just too much wrong with... It was just too cliché to, for it to be a good story. Which is a shame, because I really wanted to like this story. 
I, I really did want to like this story, but it just, I just couldn't because of all the cliches. So, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed. So, I, yeah, it's just shame. But yeah, that was Puyo Puyo's son. Now, if you want this, well, the creepy pasta. It's literally just called Puyo Puyo's son. It also has like original in parentheses because the the author of this creepy pasta commented on it saying that it the this is the original because it got removed because it had the name Satan but yeah while it, it the it's Puyo Puyo's son that's the name of the creepy pasta but yeah and if you want to s- also before I end this video, if you want to see like me doing this, the footage I recorded for this video, and it's full length, I I'm gonna upload it in its full length tomorrow. So, yeah, look forward to that. In fact, I'm going to leave you with a little teaser of the, of the, like, the full video. Just a little teaser, just to show you that, like, just because. So, Thank you for watching this creep listening to this creepy pasta. Let me know what creepy pasta you want me to read next. And yeah. Enjoy this little sneak peek. <laughs> Yeah, I need to go because